Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to solve practice programs related to read, write and open system call. The questions that we are going to discuss in this video are First one is a program to read a maximum of 15 characters from the user and print them on the screen. So pretty simple one. The second one, we are going to read some content from a file f1.txt and then copy it into another file f2.txt. Now make sure that the file f2.txt, whatever content is there, that should not be overwritten. And the final question will be to copy the contents of one file. So this is like copying the entire contents of one file. You don't know how much is written in the file. So copy the entire contents of one file into another file. Now this is going to be a star question because this is not pretty straightforward. The challenge will be that since you don't know how much content is there, so how we are going to develop the logic to copy that content into another file. Now before I discuss the solutions, I just want to tell you that we are going to come up with more such videos where we are going to discuss a lot of questions that can be helpful to you during your exams or that you can use to evaluate how much concept you have understood. But these videos will be available only for premium members. So do become a member of the channel and you will be able to access all these videos. So the first question was to read maximum of 15 characters and print them on the screen. So it's pretty straightforward. So in the very beginning, we will need the header file for the read and write system call. If you don't remember the header file, which is unistd.h, simply open the manual page for either read or write and you will see this there in the manual page. So what you need to do is you need to read from the user. User means zero. Zero is the standard input device, file descriptor for the standard input device. So the user is going to use the keyboard. So read from the user, so zero. Now I need to save it somewhere. So let's save it in buffer. Now I have not defined buffer anywhere. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I need something called a buffer. So this is an array. All right, since I'm going to read maximum of 15, so the array size should be 15. Okay, so go step by step. Read from the user into buffer how much you want to give maximum of 15. So this is maximum 15. Now the user might write less than 15 also. So you don't know how much he's going to write. So what I'm going to do is whatever he writes, I'm going to save that into a variable n. If you don't understand this logic, simply go through the video once again on the read and write system call. So now whatever the user types that is read by the read system call, then write on the screen from the buffer how much the amount that was read, which is saved in n. So read returns the number of factors read so that we have saved in n. That's why I'm going to use this n into the right here. Close it, save it. Compile the program and run it. So you can see if I type 5, all right. If I type more, let's suppose 10, fine. So this will be fine till 15, but the moment I type more than 15 characters, so this is like 20 or 21 rather, you can see it only takes first 15 characters as an input and rest goes to the command prompt as a command so that's why it is saying command not found so this is restricting the user till maximum of 15 characters only now let us discuss the second question so in the second question i need to copy certain content from one file into another without deleting the original content of the second file so include the header file std uni std dot h Now, since you need to copy from one file into another, this means I'm going to use the open system call to know the file descriptor. For the open system call, we require three header files, sys slash types.h, stat sys.stat.h and fcntl.h. So these are the three header files that are required. Again, if you don't remember, then simply open the manual page, man space two space open and you will see these three header files. 
all right so i need to do what i'll go again step by step so that you understand the logic if i need to know the if i need to read from a file i need to know the file descriptor so the very first thing that i require is the file descriptor now how do i know the file descriptor i need to use the open system call okay i cannot proceed with read until and unless i know the file descriptor to know the file descriptor i need to open the file so let's open the file f1.txt since the file already exists so i'm going to open it in read only mode because i'm just going to read from this so the two parameters are required because the file already exists now whatever is the file descriptor open will return it into a variable so let's use a variable fd1 similarly i need to open the other file so for that we use the file descriptor fd2 open f2.txt now in this file i am going to write so the mode should be write only plus this is the catch now i don't want to overwrite the existing content okay so i need to open this in append mode this is the key now i have not defined fd1 fd2 so now since these two variables are required so i will de declare them fd1 fd2 i'll also need n for reading so another variable now read from where from the first file for the file descriptor is fd1 into buffer okay so again define a buffer since i want to read 20 characters so my buffer size should be more than 20 so let's take it as 25 even if you take 20 it's fine so read from the first file fd1 into buffer how much you want to read 20 characters now in case the file has got less than 20 characters so it will not be able to read the entire 20 because there is not 20 characters available so under certain situations the teacher might trick you by creating a file which has less number of characters so what you need to do simply use this concept okay n so whatever is read even less than 20 that will also be fine so it will contain how many it is able to read so again write where into the second file from the buffer how many not 20 but how many are read whatever is read so that can be maximum of 20 okay now close this so the program is ready i need a few integer variables a character array then open the first file in read only mode open the second file in write only mode and the append mode then read from the first file into the buffer 20 characters write into the second file from the buffer maximum of 20 it might be less than 20 i'll show you both the cases now let's create the files first because the files already exist as per the question so f1.txt now i will write certain content so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 again so these are my first 20 characters okay then there is space and then a b c d e f and i write something more finally end all right so this is what is written in the first file similarly i can write something in the second file because this is in the second file i need some content otherwise you will not be able to tell whether it was able to prevent the overwriting of the existing content or not so ensure that your second file also has certain content into it now both our files are ready i will just show you once again the contents so that we can compare after running the program all right now let's compile q2.c run this successful all right now let us see what is the updated content of the second file so i have copied first 20 characters first 20 were from 1 till 0 these are the these are the first 20 characters all right so you can see here these two lines were already there okay this you can compare and then 
first 20 characters are written into the now if you look at the program once again so I told you here to use n don't simply do like this and don't do it like this because it this will work fine if the file contains more than 20 characters okay I'll just show you this then I will modify it again now let us suppose that the file f1.txt from where I want to copy this contains only five characters now this is going to cause a problem because you are reading 20 and writing also 20 but there are not 20 characters to read now if I view the second file content you see here garbage value right those 1 2 3 4 5 are there fine but there's a garbage value so to prevent this uh, this is my program so that's why I use n always use this method always okay now even if there is less content then also your program will run fine it will not cause any problem so this is the existing content now for the f2.txt file if I compile the program again run it again and if we view the contents of f2.txt you see now exactly 5 have been copied there is no garbage value alright now coming on to the last question which is to copy the entire content of a file into another file so just to save my typing I am going to copy the second program into another file or the third program so I'm just going to modify here only so my program is copy entire copy entire content of one file into another alright so need not to type the entire content again and again if you have a similar file already written simply create a copy of that particular file so most of my uh, logic remains same the only problem is I don't know how much is written into the file so I'm going to use the same file f1 and I'm going to copy into another file f3 alright so this time again I'm going to assume that this file already exists so if you want to create an append mode fine if you don't want simply delete this okay so this is going to overwrite any existing content if present but since f3 is not there so what I can do is what we do this since f3.txt is not there we are going to create it on the go so this particular program itself is going to create f3.txt so we need to do what we need to include another flag o underscore create because the file does not exist since I'm going to create it so I need to give it certain permissions so I'm going to give read write permission to the user read to others and the group members okay now I need to read from first file into the buffer and I need to write from the into the second file from the buffer now I don't know how much is there okay so I need to put this thing into a loop okay reading and writing should happen as long as there is something to read so while now what is there in n always remember n contains how many characters it was able to read okay so let us suppose the file contains 45 characters so in the first while it is going to read the first 20 characters so n is going to get the value 20 all right so while it is able to read something so while this n is not equal to 0 okay so the first time it will not be 0 it will be 20 do what write into the other file from buffer how much 20 characters all right because it will be able to read 20 next time again it's going to read 20 characters now the third time there are only 5 left so 20 plus 20 more 40 and now only 5 are left so at the third time it's not going to read 20 but it is going to read only 5 doesn't matter n is still going to be greater than 0 not equal to 0 right so it is going to write the last 5 also after that while n so it again tries to read 20 
but this time it will not be able to read anything because there is nothing left. So the value of n will be 0, the while condition will become false and it will get out of the loop. Okay. So in this way you will be able to copy the entire content of the file into another file. Okay. Now here if you want to keep 20, fine, you want to keep 10, you want to keep 1, everything is going to work. You can try this by changing the values. So let's compile it. Now I will show you what is there in the again first file. Okay, so there is very little content. Doesn't matter, let's try whether we are able to copy this or not. So GCC question 3 dot C run it. So I'm going to a dot out. So the new file is f3. Let's see what is there in f3 txt. Right? Exactly five characters. Now let's modify f1 txt. Now I'm going to write a lot more, way more than 20. Okay, so you can write anything. The last is end. Just to be sure that we have copied everything. So I'll show you the content once again to verify. All right, compile. You need not to compile the program again because we have not made any changes. Run it. Fine. Now let's check f3.txt. So you can see the entire content is there. So once again, what I have done is opened both the files. The only logic is here while. While there is something to read. Okay, read from the file into the buffer 10 or 1 or whatever, the count will cut here. So as long as it is able to read something, this means the value of n will be greater than 0. So while n is not equal to 0, do what? Whatever it has read, you write it into the other file from the buffer and this loop will continue until it is not able to read anything and the loop will break and the entire file be copied. So in the next video, we are going to discuss some more questions which will involve LSEQ and obviously they will require read, write and open system calls. So in the next video, we are going to focus a little more on the system calls, basic system calls.